you could argue that the uh, AFC North uh, is one of the most competitive divisions in all of football, right? Right up there with the AFC West uh, this season. Uh, and normally it's been really Pittsburgh and Baltimore, but Cleveland over the last few years and Cincinnati, of course, after last year have reemerged in this conversation, right? And uh, probably one of the most unknown situations is what, what, what happens in Pittsburgh. What, what are the expectations for this team? Mike Tomlin, of course, never having a losing season as a head coach in Pittsburgh. What are the expectations for this team heading into this preseason? Well, I think the expectation is, is to take a step forward. That's the first thing. The first step is, you know, at this point in the year in preseason, it's not a team yet. It's a bunch of guys trying to become a team. You have 90 trying to become 53. So the biggest thing is taking a step forward. You have an opportunity, not wasting that opportunity to shine bright on the national stage when this game is televised. You get to go and do it against somebody that you don't have to walk in the locker room or the dorm room afterwards and explain yourself about why you got hit. I think this is that first opportunity. But I think for the Steelers as a whole, when you're looking globally at what the expectation level is, the expectation level is to go out there and compete and be competitive this year. Just because seven's not a quarterback, you have a, you have a great defense who's coming back and really resurging. Last year was, was a down year from, the obviously, the rushing yards per game given up. They were last in the league. But you also know that there was injuries and everything else. This, that group looks healthier. It's still five years in a row leading the league in sacks year in and year out. So we know they can press when you get teams in the passing situation. The biggest question mark is going to be that offense. Can you get off to a fast start? Last year, 37 first quarter points, Ryan, in 17 games. 37 total. Right. That's not in. It's not once. That is that, that that puts your defense at a very stressful situation. So the biggest thing is going to come out. Prove that you can get off to a fast start. Prove that this Matt Canada offense is explosive and it can put points on the board. That's going to be the first thing. And then that's the first step that they, they really want to take. And then for the defense, it's shoring up that run defense, showing that a team like Seattle who's coming in committed to running the ball, can you stop them from running the football? Those are the first two things I'm looking for this Saturday. Uh, you talk about legacy and history, right? Uh, I grew up a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, right? Uh, growing up yeah. in Montana, we didn't have uh, a pro team anywhere. So um, we had relatives in Pittsburgh, and they would send along the uh, – uh, the iron beer cans with the team, oh, yeah. the team picture on it. Um, and I loved the black and yellow and Terry Bradshaw. And I've watched it over time. And what's been so impressive about this organization, and you can speak firsthand to this, is what the Rooney family has been able to do, right? Uh, three head coaches in, 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 the, in the time frame I've been alive and been a Steelers fan. I mean, the consistency, the winning, the pedigree, and uh, the tradition is is unparalleled, I believe, in this in this league. Speak to that a little bit. What the Rooney family has done and the tradition and history of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, we all know, you know, that years nineteen seventy really. Uh, you have the AFL NFL merger, but you have something else. You have this influx of talent. A guy by the name of Joe Green gets drafted, <laughs> and and from that point forward, we know that's the origin of what we know the Steelers to be a new standard was set. We can go back into the sixties and the fifties and the forties. Of course they were founded in 1933, but that's it, it, a checkered past, right? There was a, there was a year they even, they formed during world war two where they formed with Philadelphia and became the Steagles. You know, there, there's a lot of his, but 70 is a defining moment where you hire Chuck Knoll the year before. And then he is his first draft class. And then we know what the 70s are. That, that is the Steelers' decade. When you're talking about decades for NFL teams, that was the Steelers unequivocally. And from there, a standard was set. And the standard was, we're going to be tougher than everybody else out there. We're going to play a physical brand of football. And that has transcended. That's one of the things that when we think about the Steelers, whether it's a Steelers fan or not, you think of Pittsburgh, you automatically, like, ooh, that's going to be a rough game. That's going to be a physical altercation. Uh, when, when you step in that stadium or when they come into ours and you knew you were going to feel it the next week. And I think that's kind of what's permeated. It started with the steel curtain and it's carried on today. And that's one of the things I think about and what makes it special. And, and, it, and it starts with the steadiness at the top. The Rooney name has been associated with leading this franchise since its inception. And to be passed down from father to son and to now father to son, again, it's, uh, it's something that, you don't take for granted. And, you know, this is my first year coming back for training camp. I was hired last year to come in in the sideline uh, duties when, uh, you know, the great Tunch Ilkin passed away 
and and I was asked if, if I could come in and not replace, but simply come in and, and assist with the broadcast because right. you can't replace touch. But, you know, it, being around the guys, being here at St. Vincent's, which before COVID, 54 straight years where training camp was held here in Latrobe, PA, at St. Vincent's College. So every Hall of Famer that we know in the modern era has started here on those same exact fields that we practice on today, and that's the proving ground, right? That's the forge before you can make steel. You come out here to become a team that then goes down to Pittsburgh and performs on every Sunday and every other football day. And I think that's, that's an important thing. But the Roonies are here. You see them every day. Mr. Rooney's in the lunchroom. I, was, I just saw him earlier. And you see everybody around this organization just embrace it. Coach Tomlin, we had a, had, a, had a conversation with him, you know, in the dorms. Everybody's available and everybody's growing. And I think that's something that we don't get in a lot of places. You know, you know, I, I had I had the unfortunate opportunity to go to San Diego and I went to St. Louis and it was just, it was different. And now those teams are both in L.A., which is crazy that <laughs> those two sites are no longer existent. But it's a different sense. And, and you see when it's an older organization that's been passed down through the history of the NFL and over five decades plus of security, it makes it crazy to think three head coaches. How many, how many coaches have the Browns gone through in the last six years? And if you think of the Steelers since 1970, yep. they've only had three total head coaches. And the current one is on his 16th season, and he's never had a losing season to this point. He has something to defend, and that's just tremendous. And all of them have Super Bowl victories. All three of those coaches have Super Bowl victories under their belts, and it just goes to show that the standard that they've created is just something that, you know, when you get here, you're somewhere special. 